Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all over the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We've got a whole bunch of callers on hold, so we'll get to them in just a minute. It'll be fun to see what their questions are, and even more fun to see what Spirit has to say about them. But first, just wanted to remind all of you that next two Tuesday on February 28th, we're going to do the Ask Julie Ryan Live, which is like a Zoom slumber party. And it is a blast. You can join us. You can come in your jammies if you want. And what we'll do is I'll answer questions. We'll be able to do all my buffet of psychicness. I can scan you medically. We can talk to a deceased loved one. We can do all that fun stuff. But there there aren't any breaks. It goes fast. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Well, I take that back. We do take a potty break halfway through. But uh, please consider joining us. Just go to AskJulieRyan.com forward slash live and join the fun. The best part is I give away a whole bunch of prizes. I give away uh, free sessions. I give away free classes. I give away lots of free stuff. So it is a party atmosphere and it's just a blast. Hope you can join us. Okay, let's go to the phones. And our first caller is Kamiko. Hi, Kamiko. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm terrific. How are you doing? Okay. Um, I'm doing okay. I think. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Where are you located? I'm in New York City. Okay. Terrific. Got a question yeah. for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I guess I'll preface it with you know, just I've just been feeling um, kind of like a disconnect from self and. I, I don't know if you call it like a numbness or like a lack of reaction to things, kind of feeling like reclusive and stuff, that, um, low motivation and whatnot. And I want to know if there's anything that I should be aware of um, or pay special attention to in, in terms of my body, if I could like have a, from a medical standpoint, if there's anything um, like a, from like a medical scan type of thing that I, that could be a, attributing to this, like horm- I would think about hormonal or or I'm not sure, gut, or I'm not sure, but I just feel off. Okay, is this pretty, is this is a new phenomenon? You don't normally have it? Yeah, in the past couple of months, I've been feeling just, um, I don't feel like I'm as responsive to things, mm-hmm. even like emotionally responsive to things mm-hmm. as I normally, I'm a pretty emotional person, mm-hmm. typically, and mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, almost like kind of like numbish, you know, and I'm kind of don't feel like being around as many people or kind of antisocial a little bit more. Okay. Um, not that I'm out and about a lot anyways, but. <laughs> well, how, how young are you? I'm 40. Okay. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'll get you on my radar. What that means is I raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit because we're all spirits attached to a body having a human experience. And when we're attached to a body, Mm -hmm. we vibrate more slowly simply because the body has mass. So I'm going to raise my vibrational level. I'm going to close my eyes and watch a laser beam come from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to hook into you up in the city. And then I'm going to have a hologram of you in my mind's eye. And it's going to be as if I'm looking at an X-ray or a CT scan or an MRI. And uh, and then I'll see what's going on. And then immediately following that, there will be some type of energetic healing. These healings happen on the energetic level, Kamiko, and then they integrate into the body. So that can happen instantly. It can take days, weeks, months. It may need some kind of complementary care like change in diet, physical therapy, whatever. But certainly it's always our spirit's prerogative to utilize the healing in a way that's going to best facilitate whatever it is we're exploring in this lifetime. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to you in New York. Okay, got you. Uh, Yeah, you kind of look like a wilting plant, girl like a plant that needs to be watered. That is normally somebody that is needing some estrogen. Usually with women, I will Mm -hmm. see that when we need some estrogen. So have you ever heard of bioidentical hormones? No. 
Okay, bioidentical hormones are what our bodies make when we're young and fertile and popping out babies, or we can pop out babies if we want to. And as we age, our hormone levels start to diminish, and Mother Nature says, aha, she's not able to propagate the species anymore, so we need to uh, let degenerative things start to happen. And it's really easy to fix. The bioidenticals are the exact molecular composition of what our bodies make when we're young and fertile. And the synthetic hormones that big pharma makes have extra molecules added to their formulas so they can be patented. And you want the bioidenticals that you get them from a compounding pharmacy. Do you know what that is? Have you ever heard that that term before? Is it kind of like hormone replacement type of? It is. Yeah. And a, a compounding pharmacy, Kamiko, is going to be a pharmacy that makes prescriptions for people, not just pours them out of like a big bottle into a smaller bottle um, that they get from okay. big pharma. So pick, just do an internet search and look up compounding pharmacy and ask them okay. who's prescribing bioidentical hormones through them. And they'll give you a list of doctors. I prefer that you try and find somebody who's a GYN because we're talking about female anatomy here. So let's go to somebody that is a specialist in that part of the body and uh, and they'll give you a list. Great. Another reason to find a GYN is normally it'll be covered under your insurance, your exams and stuff. Mm. So that'll, that'll help. In the meantime, I shot some energetic estrogen into you. That should help you feel better in the short run. But your brain fog and your lethargy and your lack of energy and all of that will get better if you um, look okay. into that and get on those. Okay? Yeah, I was kind of looking there, thinking about that kind of, uh, I guess, like perimenopause. I've been like, yeah, kind of looking into it. Yeah, um, Perimen- so perimenopause. Kind of in line with something I was kind of had some suspicions about. Yeah, perimenopause can last 20 years. And um, yeah. the, the bioidenticals keep your brain healthy, your bones healthy, your heart healthy, your skin healthy. I've been on them for 19 years. I won't be without them. Oh, wow. So um, they <laughs> help me run circles around 20-somethings because I have lots <laughs> of energy because I'm on the hormones and they keep me healthy. So check them out. Call a compounding pharmacy and, and they'll, they'll give you some names of doctors. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much. I you appreciate bet. it. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. All righty, let's go to Marcy next. Hi, Marcy. Hey, Julie, how are you? I'm terrific. How are you doing? I can't complain at all. Wonderful. Please tell everybody where you're located. I am in North Richland Hills, Texas, and I am calling about my stepsister who is in Abilene, Texas right now. Okay, great. All right. She has... um. Are you on speaker, Marcy? Marcy, are you on speaker? No, I'm on my I'm on my um, phone. Okay, all right. I'm getting feedback. I'm not sure why, but go okay. ahead. Hold on a second. Okay. Okay, is that better? Yeah, it is. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Where were we? Your stepsister's in Abilene. What's her name? Yes, her name is Kay. Okay. What's and okay? Has, what's going um, on with Kay? Neuropathy. Say that again. She's in um, the hospital with some um, vascular problems, and we were just really worried about her. Oh. What's happening? What kind of vascular problems? She, um, I guess, she's got some atherosclerosis, and um, like, uh, what is that? Where the veins are, are filled with clots and stuff? Not clots, but like um, plaque. Oh, how old is she? She's only 51. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, let me, I'm going to connect to you, Marcy, and then from you to Kay. And then I will ask her permission if I can scan her. If she says yes, I will. If she says no, I won't because it's an ethical thing. But all is not lost because we can talk to her spirit and find out some information. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading over to you in Texas. Okay, got you. And then going to Kay. Got Kay. Kay, I'm talking to Marcy. I know it's fine. Okay, good. Did you set that up? <laughs> <laughs> Did you set that up ahead of time? Oh, uh, all right. Didn't, just lucky. 
Yeah. Okay. Usually it's little kids that tell me no. It's so funny. Uh, I mean, it's usually somebody that's like seven or under (laughs) that tells me no. Oh, and they'll go, no, like that or no. (laughs) Okay. So shooting energy. Yeah. She's in the hospital now. Yes, she is. Yeah. And what are they doing? Just running a bunch of tests at this point? Lots of tests, um, procedures. I think they put some stents in her upper leg. Okay. All Might right. Some other stuff. Okay. So what I'm watching happen for a healing, Marcy, is the there's, imagine her vascular system is a network of tubes that kind of look like aquarium tubing. And imagine mm-hmm. that there are little corkscrews that are spinning inside all of those tubes and that's morselating all the debris that's in there, any buildup, any dead cells, whatever. And in doing so, it's clearing a path. We're going to irrigate all that gunk out of there. You know, that's a medical term, gunk. And then <laughs> we'll put stem cell energy in there and we'll, we'll regenerate it. So let's give it a minute here while it's redoing. It's just going through and clearing out. Okay, now it's being irrigated, any kind of debris out. All right, here comes stem cell energy, light amber colored gel, sparkles in it, reminds me of dippity doo hair gel. It's like a watery gel. And so there's a vortex spinning above her head, beneath her feet, on either side of her, front and behind her. All those vortices are spinning concurrently, and that's regenerating her vascular system. It sounds to me like she's got some peripheral stuff going on in her legs, but where I saw most of the block was in her carotid arteries in her neck, especially. That's what the the doctors were saying, too. She went in for her feet and then found all this other stuff. Yeah. The one, uh, the carotids in her neck seemed to be the most clogged. So they each got their own corkscrew (laughs) that was just kind of grinding that stuff out of there. Uh, right one, yeah, it looks to me like it's worse than the left, but both of them look like they were pretty clogged. So it's a blessing that she's in there because she can have a stroke and then, you know, it restricts blood flow to the brain or she can throw a clot or something. So we're hopefully heading all that off at the pass. Quite miraculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope she feels better. You're You're a sweet sister to call in and ask for a healing for her. I am. So thankful for you doing this for her. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. I hope she feels better. Thanks, Marcy. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Janet next. Hi, Janet. Hello. Hi, Janet. Hi, hi. Oh, hi. Hi, Julie. Um, I'm calling from Lexington, South Carolina. Wonderful. How are things in South Carolina? Uh, pretty nice, beautiful weather, lots of pollen, 80 degrees today. Yeah, we had 80 down here too. I went for my walk in shorts and a t-shirt and I talked to my girlfriend yeah. in Minneapolis and they got two feet of snow. But I texted her a couple of days no. ago. I said, get out now, come to my house now before this hits. She just exactly. laughed. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, I had a medical question. Um, I was hospitalized with a seizure last month. Uh And uh, my seizures have gone from focal to more generalized. And I wonder if they have me on the right meds and if you know the cause of why it changed. Have you been having them for a while or is this something new? Um, the, the, The generalized seizures is a new thing, but I've had focal seizures since about 2010. What's a focal seizure? That's that's a more um, minor seizure. You know, it's not like a grand mal seizure. Okay. So it's like a baby seizure? And then change to, a, yeah, it's kind of like a, a milder seizure where you, you know, just, just kind of stop what you're doing and, you know, it, it's just more minor. Oh, heavens. How long have you been having uh, seizures, grand girl? mal is more serious. Yeah. How long have you been having those? Um, well, the grand mal have, is recent mm-hmm. since about a month ago, and I was and hospitalized. Ha- and how about um, the other ones, the so, focal You know, ones. they don't really know why it's changed from focal, more minor thing to more serious one. 
Okay. And, uh, How- you know, playing around with the medicine. And I just wonder if you can get any information on, mm-hmm. on that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, how long have you been having the focal ones? Uh, Since 2010. All right. So for a while. All right. Let me get you on my radar. Say that again. I'm sorry, Janet. Um, It was infrequent seizures. Yeah. Like one every two years. I mean, it was not a lot. Okay. Going in. I've got, I'm connected to you. My laser beam went east. Northeast, a little bit. Uh, all right, got you. I'm in your brain looking around. You look like you got mold exposure to me, girl. Have you had a water leak in your mm-hmm. house? Um, yeah, we did have a little bit of a water leak. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that it would make sense. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a healing on your brain while we're talking about this. Neural pathways in the brain, Janet, look to me like laser beams crisscrossing a room as part of a security system in a home or a building or a museum. And so when those neural pathways get occluded with scar tissue and other things, they can cause seizures and other other issues. So I'm kind of rotor rootering those out. I'm cleaning those out, but I'm seeing mold in your brain, especially I'm, mm. let me look at the rest of your body. I think this is a mold exposure situation that is either causing it or exacerbating it. So I would go to mm. check out a website called We Inspect. Dot com or I think it's yesweinspect.com. I don't have any financial connection with these guys, but I'm really impressed with what I've read about the work that they do. Yesweinspect.com. And uh, I would have them come do an inspection of your house. A lot of contractors tell you they're experts on mold and they're not. So you really want somebody who knows what they're doing along those lines. And they don't remediate, but they tell you where you need to remediate. And then they tell you what, they'll give you some pointers on that. In the meantime, I've cleared out the neural pathways in your brain, and hopefully that will help. The other thing that I've done is I've, your energy looks frenetic to me. It looks like snow on a malfunctioning TV or computer screen, Janet. And so I've grounded yeah. you to get you to calm down. Do you feel kind of jittery or kind of like nervous or? Yeah, the, you know, the the seizure medicine has so many side effects and it's difficult to, you know, to get used to them. Yeah, yeah. So is Janet on the optimal prescription for her seizures? I get a no. Have you heard of number needed to treat, Janet? NNT, number needed to treat? No. Okay. Number needed to treat is the number of people that need to take a medicine in order for it to help one person. The higher the number, the less effective the medication. So do an internet search on the name of your medicine. Put the acronym N. Nancy, Nancy T, number needed to treat. Put NNT after the name of your medicine. And then read what it says. The higher the NNT number, the less effective the medicine. You can have an adult discussion with your doctor and say, look, this isn't very effective anyway, so it's not worth the symptoms that it's causing as far as the side effects. Yeah, so check that out too. So I hope all that stuff helps. All right. Okay, thanks for calling. Hope you feel better. Bye-bye. Thank you. All righty. We do this show every Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. The call-in number is 667-770-1476, and the access code is 483-620-POUND. Now, this information is available on my website, AskJulieRyan.com, and in the show notes. You can download the show anywhere you get your podcasts, and we're also on YouTube and Alexa. So please remember to subscribe and leave a review anywhere you download podcasts and also on YouTube, or you can go to ratethispodcast.com forward slash Julie. 
Let's see. Colin details can also be found on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook. Everything's at Ask Julie Ryan. We will post a reminder the day of the show and it'll say, hey, remember, call in. And then also I send out a blog every Wednesday night and it's a question somebody has asked and then I answer it. And there's a note in that blog too that, remember, we're doing a show tomorrow night. So if you have a question, call in. AskJulieRyan.com is where you can schedule an appointment with me. Just get on my calendar and then periodically click on the reschedule button on your confirmation email to see when earlier dates and times have become available. People reschedule all the time. Each week, I'll have three or four people that reschedule. So remember that. Ask Julie Ryan Live Tuesday night. I mentioned that before Tuesday the 28th. It's always the fourth Tuesday of the month. It's a blast. And then lastly, my class angelic attendant training for June is starting to fill up. So if you'd like to learn how to do all this woo-woo stuff that I do, please consider joining us for that. That is life-changing and it's so much fun. So everything you need is at AskJulieRyan.com. Okay, this week, the question is from Judy, and Judy's from Long Beach, Mississippi. And she said, Hi, Julie. Although I'm 73 years old and relatively healthy, an autoimmune condition called Sjogren's syndrome rears its ugly head regularly now. Joint soreness, muscle pain, etc., have become part of my life, although I walk at least a mile every day. In addition, I also have severe neuropathy in both lower legs, and I'm still having hot flashes. Speaking of hormones, we were talking about that earlier. Can you help? Thanks, Judy. And here's my response. Hi, Judy. Thanks for your question. I'll do my best to help you find some relief. The Mayo Clinic says Sjogren's syndrome is a disorder of the immune system identified by its two most common symptoms, dry eyes and a dry mouth. So to get some answers for you, I energetically connected to you and saw a hologram of your body in my mind's eye. Your gut and GI tract looked very inflamed, even raw in some areas, and the nerves in your legs looked dark in spots. This is how injured nerves appear to me, again, in my mind's eye. Next, I saw healing occur in your stomach and GI tract that involved using a thick white cream with anti-inflammatory properties to calm the affected tissues. Think of a really thick white face cream, like in a Nivea jar or some other kind of face cream that's real thick. And like when you put it on your skin, it feels cold. Not an eczema, not stingy, but just like a regular face cream. I went on to say, then I saw stem cell energy applied to regenerate those tissues. As for the nerves in your legs, I watched a healing on them that included clearing out the dead cells and debris, followed by stem cell energy to regenerate the injured nerves. Interestingly enough, in an article published by the National Institutes of Health, titled Gut Dysbiosis is Prevailing in Sjogren's Syndrome and is Related to Dry Eye Severity, researchers identified a connection between the gut and Sjogren's. The article stated Sjogren's Syndrome shows, that's a lot of shows, Sjogren's Syndrome showed significant gut dysbiosis compared to controls and environmental dry eye syndrome. This is great news because it means if you work on getting your gut healthy, it'll most likely help lessen or even eradicate your symptoms. Since food's the best medicine, please consider doing an at-home gut biome test that will help you identify what foods are best for you to avoid and what foods are best to incorporate into your diet. Hope you feel better. So anybody that wants that gut biome test, fancy name for a poop test, just go to AskJulieRyan.com, click on the Ask Julie button, and just say, hey, can I have the gut biome test link? We'll send it to you. It's a little bit of a discount, and it'll make it easy for you. So thanks, Judy, for sending that in. Okay, let's go back to the phones, and our next caller is Rennie. Hi, hi. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Terrific. Thanks. Where are you located? San Francisco. Okay. Terrific. Got a question for me? 
Yes. My husband and I are trying to conceive our first child, and I'm not sure if there's some sort of blockage or hormone imbalance um, or something that needs to be cleared. I have um, fertility tests that I'm awaiting results from. Uh Uh-huh. Just wondering if you have any insight for me. Sure. Absolutely. Let me get you on my radar. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading out to San Francisco. Okay, got you. You have two baby's energies over your right shoulder. They look like little orbs, Rennie, that you'd see in a picture. Mm-hmm. You know, little, and we used to think, well, maybe that there was a speck of dust or something that was causing that to be seen, but it's not. It's that our cameras take pictures fast enough now that we can see the baby spirits. They're not twins. They're spaced out, you know, one behind the other. So there's that. Let me get you, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the hologram that's you in my mind's eye around so I can look at your girly parts from the back. Okay. So I'm going in, okay, on the ovaries. I'm in the ovaries. I'm going to put stem cell energy on both ovaries. How young are you, Rennie? I'm 43. Okay. All right. So stem cell energy is going on both of the ovaries. Light amber colored gel sparkles in it. Reminds me of Dippity Do hair gel, watery gel. And I'm also putting it on the, I think it's called philia. It's these little finger things at the end of the fallopian tubes that grabs the eggs when you mm-hmm. ovulate. Those, those just get shorter with age. And so stem cell energy is on there. So we're growing them really long. They kind of look like seaweed to me, <laughs> kind of floating in the water. Uh, you know, that's that's still planted at the bottom of the ocean, you know, when you see seaweed kind of moving. All right. Corkscrews, double barrel going through the fallopian tubes just to clean those out, coming into your uterus. Uterine lining looks a little thin. Where are you in your cycle? Um, mid-cycle. Okay. That would make sense that it wasn't real built up. I mean, it doesn't look like too thin but it looks thin, which would make sense. Okay. All right. So got that. I I think you're on your way. There is a, a book I can recommend, Rennie. It's called The Better Baby Book. The Better Baby, Better book. baby book. Yeah. And it's by Lana and Dave Asprey, A-S-P-R-E-Y. Lana's a physician who was told she would never conceive and she not only had two babies, but she was able to fully restore her fertility. So she talks about what she did to do that. A lot of it has to do with nutrition. So you may want to wonderful read that and see see if that has some helpful advice for you. But let us know how you're doing. I believe that you're going to uh, be a mama because I'm seeing two baby spirits. So I hope I hope that helps. Yeah. Did you see about how long it would be before conception? I had no idea. And we're never supposed to know. Okay. So when we give up that control and we know that babies are coming and we just let them, they're going to come when they're ready. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. Yeah. You know, just be ready. Get your receptacle ready. Get yourself in really good shape. And everybody always wants to know when, but then you're you're trying to control. And as soon as you try and control something, you're in a low vibration. So you're going to attract more of, I'm not pregnant, I'm not pregnant, I'm not pregnant. So just know they're coming and, and do what you can just to I'm get ready for them. It. Yeah. Okay. Send us a picture of the baby when they come. For your help. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All righty, let's go to Tanya next. Hi, Tanya. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks. Please tell everybody where you're located. I am located in Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. How are things there? 80 degrees today. Yeah, we would had it too. Yep. Where are the, yeah. they're freezing in the north. I, Tim and I, my husband and I watched the movie Where the Crawdads Sing. Last weekend, mm-hmm. oh my, takes place in North Carolina. Have you seen that movie yet? Yeah. 
Oh. No, I have not. Oh, you need to watch it. It's really good. Yeah, it's really good. Everybody who hasn't seen it, watch it. It's terrific. We we both were like, oh my God, it has a surprise ending. But anyways, okay. that's, that's all I'm going to say for a spoiler alert. <laughs> 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 not much of one, but a little bit. Get, get you to watch it. Yeah. Well, you got a question for me? I do. Um, I'm in Raleigh and my son is in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. And he's just had a tough time with inflammation in his feet. And we have a di- um, a situation where we found out he has a specific gene with a rheumatologist. And we're waiting to kind of rule out and figure out what's going on with him. And he has an upcoming appointment. And I just wanted to know, he has a daughter that he's raising and he's trying to live, make a living. But this autoimmune situation, we just don't know. <laughs> where it came from, what to expect, and how to approach it. Okay. Is he in the military, or is he just, he just lives in Dayton for his regular job? Is he at Wright-Patterson? Yep. He lives in Dayton, Ohio, um, okay. 33. Yeah. And this came on in, within the last two years. What's his name, Tanya? Colin, C-O-L-I-N. Okay. Does he know that we're going to check on him tonight? Did you prep that? No, he doesn't. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm going to connect to you in Raleigh and from you to Dayton. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam heading northeast to you, coming back west to go to Dayton. All right. Got that. Got Colin. Colin, I'm talking to your mom. Is it okay if I scan you energetically? He's saying, what's that? (laughs) It's like, so... (laughs) What I'm going to tell him is I'm like a human MRI. It's going to be like, I'm going to see if I can figure out what's going on and causing the mm-hmm. in- inflammation. He says, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Kind of like, yeah, come on. All right. He is full of red fog, which is inflammatory energy. So I'm getting that calm down, Tanya, with blue anti-inflammatory energy. And uh, so I can get underneath it and see what's going on there. Okay. He's in a mast cell reaction, which is just an immune reaction that's that's just kind of chronic. And when I see mast cells, they look like clear cells with red dots in them. And they're all over his body. So I'm doing that. Autoimmune is normally a gut issue. Like 99% of the time, I've heard doctors say all autoimmune issues are caused by gut being messed up, leaky gut, gut, gut dysbiosis, they call it. So is he uh, in a situation where he's around chemicals or has he been on a lot of antibiotics? What's the autoimmune thing going on with him? Well, he wasn't on any meds until this autoimmune situation came up but before that he did lawns but he doesn't do that anymore he's a machinist now yeah which is less you know heavy on his body right that's what i was getting it was a chemical thing and also antibiotics so what we're doing is a lymph cleanse on him right now imagine there's a big oval tube that's in the front of his body and there's a hole that's opened on the bottom of each of his feet and his lymph fluid is inside that tube and it's spinning very fast and any kind of toxins or debris or anything in his lymph system is going out the bottom of his feet. So it's detoxing for him right now to help him get rid of that stuff. I I I think it's the chemicals that he was exposed to that probably was the catalyst that caused this. And then he's been on the hamster wheel with the medicine since. So the other thing that he can do for his feet is soak them in Epsom salts and put a little Mm -hmm. bit of apple cider vinegar in there and have him soak his feet in warm water at the end of the day. And that'll help him detox stuff out of his feet. Okay. Yeah, that'll help a lot too. Also, there's a uh, doctor I recommend. Again, I don't have a financial relationship with her, but her name's Maria Amasanti. She's in London, Tanya, but she works with people around the world. 
She is an Oxford-educated internist. She's a general practitioner. She's a functional medicine doctor, so she knows how to reverse engineer symptoms. And she's a graduate of my angelic attendant training, so she does energy medicine. So go to Dr. D-R-A-M-A-S-A-N ti.com, dramasanti.com. Uh-huh. I think it would make sense for him to do a consult with her because she can be kind of like his general contractor and help him okay. steer and make sense of all these different doctors and these different tests. She can review them. She's not going to prescribe meds or anything for him, but it's just it's just good to have somebody that has all those skill sets that is removed who can look at everything and help him get well. Okay. So I would I would highly recommend that he do an appointment with her on Zoom. Dr. Amasanti.com. All righty. I got it. Okay. I hope he feels better. You're a sweet mama calling about your baby. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye, Tanya. Bye. Okay. Let's see. Let's go to Julie next. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Love your name. <laughs> Love yours too. Thanks. Where are you? Um, I'm from Wisconsin. Okay, terrific. Got a question for me? Um, we had two kitties in at the end of November. Little Gray, we call one, and Oreo, we call the other. And Little Gray has had diarrhea since we've gotten him. And the doctor did a stool sample, a special one. I'm going to put my husband on because he did that with her. Hello, Julie. (laughs) Hi. What's your name? Hi, it's Rick. Hi, Rick. So you got to have all the fun to do the stool sample, lucky guy. Yeah, chasing (laughs) a cat around. (laughs) Oh, geez. Okay. Well, yeah. So... What'd you find out? Well, he had a low level of clostridia. Uh Uh-huh. And otherwise, all the other tests that we ran, and we ran lots and lots of them, um, everything else was negative. Uh Uh-huh. But I guess he he has chronic diarrhea, and it's really bad. Oh, poor baby. And he's been losing weight, so... The doctor finally said it's been long enough trying to switch foods and all the other stuff that the vet and other people have recommended, and uh, nothing mattered. It just always aggravated it more. Mm-hmm. So she has him on prednisone to settle mm-hmm. things down mm-hmm. and gave an injection of antibiotic that would work on that clostridium mm-hmm. um, because he was given oral antibiotics and he violently threw up from them and that's how irritated his whole digestive system is um so anyway he seems to be doing okay but julie's been worrying so much about him Mm -hmm. and uh and i guess she wants i guess she wants to know what he's what's going on or what he's feeling yeah all right so uh I've got him on my radar because I connected to him right when I was talking with Julie. I've gotten three times that there's some kind of parasite thing going on too. So I don't know if that, it doesn't sound like that showed up on your stool test, but what I've been doing is a is a parasite healing, anti-parasite healing too. I do see the bacterial infection. And so I've applied antibiotic energy, which is kind of a fuchsia color. Imagine a fuchsia colored fog, more pink than purple. And I've also, what I'm doing is I'm clearing out the parasites. Parasites look like little paramecium's. Do you remember in grade school when we looked at pond water under the microscope? They look like these little wormy things that are squiggly. Grass clippings. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you think, oh, and when you look at tap water and there's all that squiggly stuff in there, you're thinking, oh my, we're drinking that stuff? Holy mackerel. But um, I love to do anti-parasite healings because it makes me feel like Princess Leia with a lightsaber. (laughs) Because I use a laser and go back and forth on the either the human body or the animal body, and it just knocks them out. It just evaporates them. 
And then and, I sucked their little carcasses it matters, out. He's one and a half to two years old. Yeah. He was found as a stray about a year ago, and they he's been in the Sheboygan Humane Society four times already in his life. Oh, um, so that would make people sense. People had him for a year. Yeah. And uh, I, unfortunately, we don't get records, and I've asked all kinds of people, and nobody gives them to us. So we don't know how long this has been going on. Yeah, probably for a while is my guess. So God bless him. Isn't he lucky that he got made his way to you guys, and you can get him better? Uh, so the antibiotics, they have animal probiotics, and they have animal antifungals. You're probably going to need some antifungals, I would imagine. Talk to your vet about this. But because of him being on the antibiotics, that just wipes out all the good stuff in his gut. Oh, and and we, you're in a catch We have been 22. giving him ProViable Forte, a prescription um, probiotic. I've been good. giving him that from the day we got him, and it, that didn't help either. Yeah. Well, because you had which, to clear the bad they stuff. they went to the prednisone. Right. You had to clear the bad stuff out first. Right. So um, yeah. I would ask your doctor for an antifungal to combat uh, candida overgrowth from the antibiotics. And I would ask her about an antiparasite medicine. Even, the, even if it doesn't show up on the tests, what I'm getting is go ahead and treat for it. And, and see if and that helps. Did treat once, and the uh, Humane Society treated three times. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all been in the last since October of twenty two. Right. Right. Well, he he's got some uh, um, robust critters in that little belly of his, doesn't he? Yep. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, so what do you do? You just keep diapers on him. No, he he uses the litter pan, but it's messy, and I just think it's got to be painful for him. Yeah. So. Oh, just keep him, make sure he's staying hydrated. That's going to be the most important thing that you can do, too, you know, till they get that cleared up. Well, sounds like he's in good hands with the vet. Sounds like she's on top of it, and uh, and I hope... I hope that information helps, and I hope that healing helps. Thanks so much for calling. Okay. All right. Give my love to Julie again. Thank you. Uh Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Okay, that's it, everybody, for this week. Thanks to everybody that called in. If I didn't get to you, please call back next week, and I'll do my best to get you on. So remember, Ask Julie Ryan Live Tuesday night. Be there with your jammies on. It'll be a blast. And sending y'all lots of love from Sweet Home, Alabama. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan. And like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.